Hello everyone, welcome back to GG, and this is part two for this news report, um, Monday, December 3rd, 2012. My website is ggnonline.com, and on YouTube my channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. So if you want to find the links for these stories, they're all in YouTube's video description. Alright, I'm going to keep moving, I still have a lot to get to. The scariest chart of the quarter is student debt. The student debt bubble officially pops as 90 plus day delinquency rate goes parabolic says they've already discussed the student loan bubble and it's popping previously most extensively in this article it says today we get the uh, third quarter consumer credit breakdown update courtesy of the feds um, federal reserve system and it's quite ghastly it says as of september 30th federal not total just federal rose to a gargantuan 956 uh, billion dollars an increase of 42 billion in the quarter the biggest quarterly update since 2006 says it's no surprise to anyone who reads this latest uh, piece says it shouldn't be a surprise at least to our readers who read about it here first but what should uh, stun you and the general public are the two charts below it says the first of which shows the 90 plus day of student loan delinquencies and the second shows the amount of newly delinquent 30 plus day student loan balances it says the charts speak for themselves so over here you have what uh, 2003 uh, and then over here you have 2012 starting off from 6% up to 11% and this is for 90 plus day delinquent student loans and for new I think it was 30 day delinquent student loans and the uh, billions of dollars it started off at 5 billion in 2003 and now in 2012 it is up to 35 billion it says that these delinquency rates for student loans are likely to understate the actual uh, rates because almost half of these loans are currently in deferment and grace periods. And it says this implies that among those loans in the repayment cycle, delinquency rates are roughly twice as high. So it says the outstanding uh, loan debt now stands at $956 billion, an increase of $42 billion since the last quarter. So here we go. Washington proposes $1 trillion bailout for delinquent student loans. This original Zero Hedge article was uh, published or posted on 11-27, November 27th. They finished by saying what? And so it's official. Pop goes the student loan bubble as just confirmed by the Federal Reserve as they describe this uh, as an anom anomaly. So this uh, article here about the bailout is from November 29th. And they joke in this Zero Hedge article, luckily student debt is dischargeable in bankruptcy. Oh wait, it isn't. So I didn't joke about it, but I've talked about it with other people, about uh, students uh, with these uh, uh, debts and stuff like that. If the crap were to hit the fan or the economy were to deteriorate and people would be put into these uh, camps or uh, detention centers or whatever, uh, debtor's prison, it would be a form of debtor's prison. And um, you know, all these people, all these students would be uh, working it off for factories like Dow and, and uh, you know Walmart and stuff like that. The Bank of Mom and Dad bail out or bails out 66% of first-time buyers. The figures show crippling impact of house prices on the young. The figures highlight generation forced to rent or live with parents or friends. It says here in London in the cities it's 72% because of housing prices are so much higher. Like we were talking about where you know uh, just an average individual in person usually their property um, their house, really. I mean, most people don't own property. They just rent the property from the state, pay the property taxes and that. Uh, but they have the house that they pay a mortgage on and that. Um, but that's considered their asset as they slave away and right before they croak, they own it. So it says, by comparison, retired homeowners over the age of 65 have more than $750 billion of property wealth tied up to the value of their homes. So this is what they're tapping into. In fact, I had a friend that actually did that uh, in 2008, 2009. Um, and it was to the point to where they were staying in a house until the sheriff had to come tell him to leave. Uh, but basically, he did what? He filed for bankruptcy, and he was, wasn't was sure. And I, he was like, what should I do? I'm like, I don't know, dude, but I know it's not going to get any better. And he did it. And uh, I helped, you know, refer him to someone that can do it. And he's in be a lot better shape now. And uh, he got out of that. And now he's uh, basically bought a, a smaller home, cheaper, more affordable, and his mother is uh, loaning him the money. But it's crazy because he just finally found work. I mean, after three years, almost maybe even more, uh, finally uh, found some work at some mill. Of course, he had to do everything under the sun, you know, the blood test, the urinal, uh, like 10 interviews, 
but yeah, that's the Brave New World. So why so secretive? The Trans-Pacific Partnership as Global Corporate Coup. So the TPP, as it's uh, dubbed, is the most secretive and least transparent trade negotiation in history. For example, public interest groups have been warning that the uh, TPP could result in millions of lost jobs. It says it will create binding policies on future congressmen in numerous areas, including those related to labor, uh, patent and copyright, land use, food, agricultural product standards, uh, natural resources, environment, professional licensing, and goes on and on, uh, as well as telecommunications and health care. In other words, as promised, the TPP goes far beyond trade, saying only two of the TPP's 26 chapters actually have anything to do with trade. Most of the grants uh, far-reaching new rights and privileges to corporations specifically related to intellectual property rights, and they're really pushing that the copyright and patent laws as well as constraints on government regulations where the leaked documents reveal that the Obama regime intends to bestow radical new political powers upon multinational corporations. So many of the things that would actually help people, maybe such as labor disputes, um, environmental um, stuff like that, um, are unacceptable to the Obama regime. It says 600 of these big corporations align with the TPP are giving him his orders, and the agreement stipulates that foreign corporations operating in the U.S. would no longer be subject to domestic U.S. laws regarding protections for the environment, finance, or labor rights, and it could appeal to international tribunal, which would be given the power to overrule American law and impose sanctions on the U.S. for violating the new rights of corporations. And just uh, briefly, Goldman wins again as European Union court rules to keep European Central Bank involvement in Greek debt fudging a secret. Referring to a landmark FOIA request, or lawsuit, I'm sorry, by a Bloomberg reporter, Mark Pittman, uh, Pittman, apparently, I guess, died, in which the Federal Reserve was forced to disclose a bunch of secret bailout information. So, But when you go down here, it says dis disclosure of those documents would have undermined the protection of the public interest. So as far as concerns the economic policy of the EU and Greece. Something we just covered, too, another ex-Goldman Sachs member taking over the Bank of England, any hopes of bank transparency in the UK have just been crushed as well. So it says here the same excuse always and forever, the common man should not know what is truly going on behind the scenes as the truth would quote, undermine protection of the public interests. Just to leave it to the smart men in tweed suits to fret about details. It is best if the general ignorant herd remains in the dark or else its protection may be impaired. So it's kind of like the mafia, right? They're going to protect you from them. Fitch warns muni uh, municipal investors on downgrades. So we're talking about local municipalities and stuff like that. Um, who always, you know, it's like people think they just pay taxes and it goes into a pot and then it pays for the roads. Well, no, it doesn't. Uh, it, it just doesn't work like that. Investors who have piled into U.S. municipal debt face rating downgrades on their bonds next year says the local government is still far from a recovery from the effects of the financial takeover and recession, says the agency expects to downgrade dozens or hundreds of issuers in 2013. Income from property taxes will stay depressed as the home prices are still resettling. Contributions to public sector pension funds are having to be stepped up to fill holes that opened when markets crashed in 2008, says governments that took the recession seriously are in better shape than those who have spent the first years dipping into reserves or patching over the deficit. U.S. small business owners are pessimistic about the post-election. The decline in optimism disproportionately driven by decline in future expectations. It says the U.S. small business owners are not too optimistic about the post-election, says with Wells Fargo Gallup small business index plunging uh, to negative 11 in November. So here's a little chart right here from 2004, starting at about, uh, what is this, 60, uh, going all the way down, really dipping in 2009 to 10, and now, uh, wow, negative 28 in 2000, mid-2010. Uh, but it says here, this is the small business index, consists of owners' ratings of their business current situation and their expectations for the next 12 months, measured in overall financial situation, revenue, cash flow, uh, capital spending, number of jobs, and ease of obtaining credit. And a little indicator here, Postal Service raising stamp price to 46 cents. It says the financially struggling U.S. Postal Service will raise the cost of a first class stamp by one cent, bringing the cost to 46 uh, cents by January 27th, 2013. But this is also in what the U.K. stamp prices uh, 
rise force half of over 50 year olds to cut back on Christmas cards so it says here it's due to soaring price of the stamp it says the Royal Mail this year raised the price of the first class stamp from 46 to 60 pence and the price of a second class one from 36 to 50 and sales of gold American Eagles are uh, higher it says what changed in the last 30 days says that uh, something appears to have snapped in the American psyche as the last 30 days have seen the largest physical gold sales on record. Also, it says between the search volume for bulk ammo and this, we fear something is afoot while Congress fiddles as our economy burns. Bernanke is going back to work is perhaps what the physical hoarders are thinking. Sandy ravaged New Jersey families are facing an almost $7,000 tax hike and fiscal cliff stalemate. Five states with top tax increases are blue states, which uh, President Obama won in 2012. It says 40 states would see tax increases between $3,000 and almost $4,000. Six states would see an increase between $4,000 and $5,000, and three would see an increase between $6,000 and $7,000. Sandy victims receive power bills despite weeks of blackouts, they say. They've received another shock during the Thanksgiving holiday when electrical bills are sent to them with regular usage rates despite the long-running blackouts. Pretty interesting. One person said, I can't get uh, the utility company to acknowledge my existence on Earth to talk to me about anything, said one victim. But I guess they had power so they could print my bills. Some people said they can put me into collections and I'll fight them tooth and nail. It's simply criminal, along with I'm not paying any of those bills that much, I promise. For more than 8 million people that were without electricity and says still thousands of New Yorkers are without power. I wish I could have covered this back then from November 22nd. It says why did the coverage stop of uh, Hurricane Sandy? It says the instant coverage of Sandy stopped so suddenly. It says because of the stupidity, hostility, arrogance, crookery of FEMA and the rest of the central state, local governments, and the people's burning hatred of them in New Jersey and New York. That's why they stopped the coverage. Such things must not be mentioned, nor the total failure of the last responders to prevent looting. As in Katrina, the only way to repel the thieves is to protect your own home with your own friends and family and your own guns. Nile. Then out here in California, city attorney tells San Bernardino residents to lock their doors and load their guns because of police downsizing. So for someone like me, that would actually be some really, really good news. But they like to scare people, kind of like the central banks that, uh, you know, about the economy and stuff like that. Says the city attorney of San Bernardino is under scrutiny for telling residents to lock their doors and load their guns. So he's under scrutiny for doing that. It's a very American thing to say. Actually, out in Russia, remember that video? There was, uh, you had one of the ministers or something like that in Russia telling the citizens to fight back against corrupt police. Also, um, they were also um, promoting uh, citizens to uh, defend themselves with firearms. Uh, recently, they just put, I think it was Cossacks or something like that. Uh, basically to help police the streets. Surprisingly, he says he doesn't regret what he said. So usually people come out and apologize when the Zionist-controlled media uh, basically attacks them and uh, politicians that are pro-Israel and Zionists have dual citizenship. He says you should say what you mean and mean what you say. The city attorney said it's important for people to be smart about protecting themselves and their families. Cities are still dropping like flies as local governments just can't get a break. Stockton, California is a case in point. In the last several months, a string of municipal governments in the states from Alabama to Rhode Island have filed for bankruptcy. Even more are likely to file within the next year as cities reel from an end to federal stimulus dollars. So talking about police officers and stuff like that, uh, in reality, you, you're better off pretend, uh, protecting yourself because what? They're not going to be there to protect you most of the time. Something I notice in the media because there's, I mean, the cops have just been doing some horrible stuff and you see it over and over and over again they keep saying oh it's just a rotten apple it's just a bad apple well it's not just a bad apple so they have to put stories out like this and, I mean, and it's great when there's sheriffs like this that say stuff like this kind of like the city council about protecting yourself but it's i think it's propaganda right now a uh, new york sheriff protects first amendment becomes internet star uh, kind of like the police officer that was praised um, in new york for giving the homeless man shoes and of course, what people all across the internet said, praise as a hero, even by cop bashers. And actually, the homeless man was a little bent about giving out all his personal information and turning it into a big internet buzz. But like another store, story, Minnesota police officer fairly shot in ambush. He was a great guy and everything, and I'm not saying he wasn't. It's just that they're losing credibility because of all these other rotten apples, and so they're trying to rebuild uh, 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 
credibility and legitimacy of these uh, police officers, these revenue collectors, the things like this where Seattle cops are brutally punching suspects that are pinned to the car. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.